Hello and good afternoon, LinkedIn. What is semantic segmentation? We saw this over in Barcelona when Microsoft unveiled their HoloLens 2.0, and it's much different than just object detection where we see that little bounding box, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. But semantic segmentation is using convolutional neural networks and machine learning, and unlike bounding boxes, you know, more specifically, it, it segments all the pixels in an image into different categories of an object. Like that is a couch, that's a chair, that's a car, that's a person. But then it can associate the dimensions of, of those pixels, right, um, with that object. And it's not just understanding that, because if we look at depth cameras, right, if we look in the upper right hand corner here, that depth Azure ca ca camera is actually gonna be able to calibrate your hand. It's gonna measure individually each one of your fingers um, and calibrate it, but also um, segmentation is very, very important when looking at the world. If you look at some of these uh, images here, just using uh, you know simple NOLO or convolutional neural networks, uh, very easy camera-based computer vision systems can now go out and look at, they're using this in a lot of autonomous driving situations, but let me, let me just go in and I'll show you the bounding box first so you understand what that is with the uh, right here. So you, you can see the bounding box here. This is just a very simple application that's looking at me and says, yes, I'm a male based on my face and wrinkles or whatever it says I'm 27. That's very nice. But let me see if I wrinkle my eyes up just a little bit and see if I can get older. All right, now it says I'm 56 years old. So let's go back into the background here on segmentation. So again, this is just basically you know, we're removing the entire background here, but let's go, let's go into the foreground. If you have a huge data set with hundreds of different people, instead of using vertical cavity surface emitting, you know, type one lasers or time of flight depth cameras, this can lighten the load on the computational requirements in all types of mixed reality applications. It's truly revolutionary and it's going to be utilized in every single application moving forward. So you'll have depth cameras like this that are just like the ones on the, the infrared flood emitters on the iPhone that are able to, you know, accurately uh, track via 30,000 infrared dots or structured like dots on your face. Um, but you're also going to have these semantic based machine learning algorithms that are able to understand um, you know where you are, how many people are in the room, if that's a table, and it can go out and then use machine learning to go out and pull from data sets and object detection and say, okay, that that table is actually from IKEA, you know, and then and the, here are the dimensions. So when you walk into a room, you're not going to need to spatially map everything because all most of the information is going to be held right there on your device, um, you know, with these edge, um, you know, computing sticks. Uh, like you know, Intel makes one, um, Google's released some of their machine learning little sticks or boards that you can integrate into your projects and it's, it's really, really amazing. And you saw the, um, the hands there, but I want to show you another one which is an eye um, algorithm to see if I can get it to work here. So it's just going to segment my eyes, you know, uh, just based on that tracking there, which is really, really amazing. And you can do the same thing here for skin. So now I kind of look like a little Smurf. It's really, really cool. But you can, I think you you can understand the types of applications for this. And I was showing you the hand segmentation because obviously that's really, really important for user interactions that we're seeing now with the Microsoft HoloLens has 25 points of hand tracking versus the Leap Motion, which I was showcasing here, which just has 22 points. But I think there's going to be a fine... Uh, differentiation between the nine points on the magic leap and the 25 points on the HoloLens, which, wh what is the minimum that we're going to require for our, our usability feasibility study uh, for proof of concepts for hand interactions? It's very interesting. Um, but I hope you understood some of this, the, some of the basics here on segmentation. If not, reach out and let me know. I, your questions are driving this channel and the content forward. You know, sometimes I run out of ideas and then somebody sends me a question at two in the morning and I go, oh my God, that's it. That's what I needed. You know, it's really, really amazing. Uh, but again, coming back to machine learning and convolutional neural networks and uh, TensorFlow 2.0, which we talked about the other day, uh, it's, it's really, really uh, kind of, I'd say, accelerating the advancement uh, you know, these various types of mixed reality, transparent display optic systems, uh, because you may not require, uh, you know, a, an incredibly powerful depth camera. If they, if they package their product with, you know, potentially an SDK like a bound, um, which is doing spatial mapping, just using your camera or 6D AI, uh, you, you can definitely get around some of these, you know, 
spatial computers like the HoloLens or Magic Leap, which are you know north of uh, two, three thousand dollars, because they need all these additional sensors, and then they have to spatially map your environment. Utilizing machine learning in the future, you may just walk into an office and all the dimensions are already known using semantic segmentation. It can see all the individual people, and thus it's saving battery life, increasing uh, productivity and efficiencies. Um, but also itself making the, the product much easier to use. And that's that's the, probably one of the more important things as we continue to move forward. I think it actually had a lip one as well. Um, but, but on the body, it's, it's just really, really cool. Hope you guys understood this. Reach out and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, thank you guys so much. Um, have a great morning. Bye-bye.